Having kids and lots of hobbies is great, but it doesn't leave a ton of time for yard work. And because of that, the weeds are sort of taken over. So today, we're gonna actually put the robots to work. We're gonna make this ultimate weed killer and finally take care of those weeds. We need the robot to be able to find weeds, which is tricky to do without AI. To train an AI to be able to find weeds, first, you need pictures of weeds. For doing that, I'm just using a phone and taking a quick video of my lawn, then pulling individual images out and actually mark out where the individual weeds are in the images. You need to be able to do this first to actually be able to train the network. There are lots of tools that you can use on your computer that will do this, but I'm using a website called RoboFlow. RoboFlow is free and has some really nice tools in it for taking the images that you've already made and creating new images so you get more training data. To train a network how to find weeds in a picture, think of it like how you would teach a person. First, you show them a picture and you have them tell you where the weeds are. They're gonna do it wrong, because they don't know what a weed is. So then you tell them where it is. You correct them. You do this over and over and over again. After a while, the person, or the network, starts to get an okay idea of where the weeds are, but it's not perfect. So you keep training more and more, and after a while, even with new pictures, the neural network or the person can start to pick them out. That's exactly what you do when training a neural network, except you do it in a computer. Doing it with a GPU is the fastest way because like when doing video processing, it can process a lot of data very quickly in parallel. If you have a setup at home with a GPU or with a Jetson, you can do a lot of this training yourself. But for this, I'm actually using Google Collaboratory. It's an online editor where you can actually write and work with Python code. But not only that, they give you direct access to GPUs. All of this is already set up for you and free. I'll put a link in the description so you can check it out. It's really easy for you to actually train networks and do this kind of work without needing to haul around extra hardware to do it. The human brain has about 86 billion neurons in it. For the network that we're using, it only has about 7 million, which is the equivalent size of this little square here compared to the brain. Definitely much less powerful. The mobile platform for this is a bunker from Agile X Robotics. It's on loan to me from Indro Robotics in Ottawa. To run all of this, we have all the hardware that's on top of the robot. So the first thing is we take power from the battery up into this voltage converter. This takes the battery voltage, which changes a bit and makes it a nice steady 24 volts. From there, that goes into our Jetson. Now this is the Rudy NX from Connect Tech, and it has a nice wide voltage range that it accepts. So it's really, really flexible in what you can put it on. Also, this has CAN on it. And CAN is an industrial protocol that a lot of cars use to communicate with all the devices within the car. It will use CAN to talk back to the robot, to communicate and send commands to the robot, but also get feedback from those commands. This has all the processing we need to control the arm and the base, but at the same time, it has CUDA cores, which are specifically meant for running things like AI and machine vision. All of that inside here, which is perfect for our application. Next, also from our voltage converter, we run the arm. Now this is the controller for the Gen 3 from Canova. The entire arm is run off this itty bitty little awesome controller. I'm so happy with this thing. It is super small, super low power, but can run an entire arm, which is perfect for doing mobile robotics. The last thing we need is an IMU. If you're ever doing any sort of mobile robotics, I highly recommend something like this. This goes a really long way to measuring where the robots actually move. It's a combination of a gyroscope, accelerometers, and a magnetometer. So fusing all of that data, it can get a really good estimate of where the robot's gone. This is a GX5 from Microstream, which is a really, really good IMU that does its own estimating inside itself to try to correct for any sort of error that might be there. And of course, last thing, I just have a screen just so I can try to figure out what this thing's thinking.
For this project, we're using a seven axis collaborative arm from Canova. This is called their Gen 3. So it has pass-throughs all the way through the arm to the end here, where you can use grippers or different IO. It also has a stereo camera built directly into the arm. Now this is similar to the Z2 that we had used on this shop defense. Make sure you check out that video if you haven't seen it. For our project, we don't actually need the stereo portion of the stereo camera because we're just tracking weeds, which are stationary. So we're just gonna use the standard video feed. But the fact that that's built into the arm and into the Ross driver already just makes our setup that much easier. Where I live in Canada, there's a whole bunch of different rules about what kind of weed killer you're allowed to use on your lawn. So to avoid the whole thing, we're just going to use the cleansing flames. <clears throat> we're gonna use this. I think the official term is a rosebud, but it's basically a flamethrower. So it's got a handle, the hot stuff comes out there, and the propane tank attaches onto the end, and that's it. We'll give this to the robot. What could go wrong? To try to save some propane, I have the torch turning itself on and off. So I put one stick on the robot and one stick on the valve on the rosebud. The arm can move the rosebud to push one stick against the other and actually open and close the valve. It's taken a while to put all this together. Let's finally take back my lawn. The arm moves to a known position in front of it and points down. The AI then takes that image and picks out where the weeds are in the lawn. Once the weeds are found, the computer can figure out where they are in space relative to the robot and can move in to pick them off. Now, this is still just a single camera, so this isn't super accurate. Luckily, we have more than enough fire to take out the weeds and everything around it. Now that the robots are taking care of the yard, I think I'm gonna take the afternoon off. As usual, all the code for this will be up on GitHub, so check that out. And if you like videos like this, consider supporting us on Patreon, or at least subscribing to the channel. That goes a really long way. Robots are awesome. Thanks for watching. See you next time.